What a day Whoa. in the city of Toronto. Yikes. What a day. <laughs> How are we feeling? Feeding the beast. We're feeding the beast, <laughs> which is Brian Hayes. Oh, Hazy, yeah. let's not beat around the bush. Why don't you give a quick recap and then entertain yeah. your thoughts? Oh, there's a lot of thoughts. A lot of thoughts. We all have thoughts. Everyone's it, got yes. thoughts, right? Um, not surprised at all that there was an announcement today. It's been a week since they last played a game. They've been out for a week. Like standard practice in pro sports is maybe you let the dust settle a little bit and then something happens. Right. I can't say I was sitting here bracing for Dubas on his own to be the one out. Now, he wasn't fired because his contract was about to expire. They right? couldn't it was, get it. They didn't get a new deal done. They, they agreed didn't get to a part new deal ways. Done. Exactly. It, it wasn't like, you know, this isn't a bombshell out of nowhere. He got fired. Everyone knew his deal was up, and I guess it was in limbo. And uh, the news came out earlier this afternoon. They're moving on from Dubas and Dubas alone. Now, that surprises me on a couple of different levels. Yep. And we'll get into all of this. The fact that they don't have an immediate replacement speaks to what has happened this week. The fact that Sheldon Keefe is still the head coach, I find quite strange. Um, but, you know, we'll see where that goes. Yet, Brendan Shanahan just spoke an hour ago. And for an organization that generally keeps everything close to the vest, we have seen two bombshell press conferences this week that will likely go down in Maple Leaf history, beginning yeah. Monday with Dubas, where I think he went off script. I think he started speaking about things that clearly caught a lot of the Maple Leaf, uh, you know, executives off off base, including Brendan Shanahan. Let's call that the beginning of the end. That was the yeah. beginning of the end. But then Great. also this afternoon, like Shanahan detailed extensively what went down this week. And, I thought and that even, was an unbelievable presser. Well, I, before I really, this week, like yes. this went back to last off season and yep. then the different chats and then the agent getting involved like that is really Ooh. very rare. It was not something I was expecting and I have an appreciation for it because everyone's an adult. The fans want to know they're uneasy on what's going on here. And I think Shanahan basically laid it all out like there was a lot of detail in terms of what happened between Shanahan and Dubas yeah I think he played it I think Dubas tried to play his hand and Shanley Shanley finally said it's enough get out this is about money and you know that that the most revealing thing was the you know I'll come back but then there's a count like another we need more money to do that I thought Monday it was about your family, but now there's, you know, there's money involved. And believe me, there, it is about your family. Don't get me wrong, but it just, it came back down. And I thought Chris Johnson, I think he asked the first question, is this about finances? And, and really the fact that they come back and say, yeah, we'll accept it, but here's a, here's, you know, we need, we need more. Finally, Shani looked like he, to me, he was like, that's it. I'm, I'm done. Like, I don't know. Like, you yeah, guys that's tell kind me of how just a level of uncertainty there where it was like, yeah, I want to be the GM and then I need to talk to the family and then let's talk about a different financial package. And I, I, I'm just guessing, but what it kind of looks like is it looks like somebody that might have something, some, something else cooking somewhere else where it's like, I'm going to see what I can manage with this. And if not, I, I don't know. That's just the sense uh, I get. How does it go sideways like that? I, yeah. I, that's what I don't understand. Yeah, I want your opinion on this, Brian. That was the biggest bombshell from that whole press conference for me is that he agreed, but there was a there was another offer, like another, well, we need this, though. Like, you know, another. Right. Well, he like, didn't agree to the terms. What he did was send an email to Shanahan last night saying, okay, I'm, I'm willing to stick around. You'll hear from my agent. And then according to Shanahan, again, this is from the horse's mouth. Right. Which, again, yeah. makes this such an – Almost a jaw-dropping press conference, the fact that Shanahan, who you never see, you right. never hear, this franchise is terrified of letting news out. He just revealed everything. And again, I have a great appreciation for that honesty, and I'd like to see that more. I'm not expecting it more, but this is a massive shift in the organization, right? And I'm not speaking about, you know, me, the guy who's coming on the air to talk about it. I'm talking fans. We always we're coming across fans all the time. Like, what's going on? Right. What are they going to do? What's happening? You know, and the fans, I believe, deserve to know. Now, I wasn't expecting that much detail, but he handed that out. And I think there's a few different 
things that need to be addressed here. First and foremost, I do think what is important, putting all of the detail aside, this time last week there was one guy for the job, according to Brendan Shanahan, and that guy is no longer available because he just showed him the door. That is, I think, concerning that they don't have a plan B or a plan C or a plan D, and I'm a bit surprised by that. That I know it didn't sound as if Shanahan was indicating this. He's taken the whole season here to think of alternatives. Basically, he began thinking of an alternative on Monday afternoon. So, who's coming in next? Who's available? What kind of marching orders are they going to have? I don't think that's you know that's certainly not a positive. That it feels as if they were putting all their eggs into the Dubas basket. Yeah. But with that said. What I appreciate and what I think needs to happen here, and I, I'm, I'm hopeful from a Maple Leaf standpoint, what Shanahan has established today is, is two things that need to be pillaged for this organization. I think we've been talking about it all week. And yep. the next step of this is to apply it to the players. Prove you want to be here and don't take advantage of us. Prove you want to be here. And don't take advantage of the situation. Well, how are a couple of them going to do that, Brian? What they're con- what, how are they going to start saying, prove you want to be here? Are you saying don't ask for the world and don't take the organization hostage to start? Yes. First of all, tr- we it, it, exp- paraphrasing, I think the, but yes. Yeah. I think what happened here is with Dubas, using Dubas as the example. On Monday, Shanahan clearly walked away with questions as to whether he wanted to be here anymore. And that is concerning. Regardless of how callous that might feel, cutthroat it might be in business, if you're the boss, you got to make sure everyone's pot committed. And regardless of the reasoning for it, if Shanahan walked away from that presser on Monday saying, I don't know if this guy's in it or if this guy wants to be here, that's a concern. And then on top of it is, okay, you want to be here, but you need more money. You want more money or you want more power, you want more whatever, which he's entitled to ask for. Let's clarify that. As soon as that that, as soon as that first element entered your brain, I would cut like that's when it would be over for me. If I got the sense, like I'm sure you, Hayes, you run the operation here. If you got the sense me or noodles didn't want to have anything to do with it, you would say, just see you later. We gotta do we got a show to do. Right. You know what I mean? No kidding. There's too much pressure. There's too much stuff on the line. Right? And and again, I think w- how that might apply to the players is you treat everyone with respect. I'm not saying disrespect anybody. Of course not. But do you want to be here? And if so, don't take advantage of us because of the media and the fans and all the losing and all that kind of stuff. I, right. I, I think that's what needs to happen here. And I think it's imperative the next GM has that marching order is treat player X – the same way he would be treated in Colorado or Tampa or Carolina or Minnesota. Don't just say, all right, because it's Toronto, I get it. It's a fishbowl. It's tough. Here's an extra $2 million right. because it's tough. they got to stop that. That's what jammed them up five years ago, six years ago, and they've been digging themselves out ever since. And the players are great players, great individual players, but they rolled over for those guys. And well, I think it, now you got a situation here where Shanahan, I think, presented this with Dubas, and he decided he either didn't really want to be here or he wanted to take advantage of whatever situation it was, and he decided to cut bait. And look, guys, big picture, we're talking about Kyle. He's a friend of mine. He's a good guy. He's a good hockey guy. Yes, At the yeah. end of the day, guys, we're talking six, seven years. We'll call it three or four with a quality team with expectations to win, and they won one playoff round. So – Nobody should be surprised that things are going to look different and a different set of eyes are going to be on this. Like, that's kind of what happens. No, I, and I'm, I'm somewhat surprised, and people should be too, in a market like this, like, it could have happened earlier. So it's not like it's shocking news in this development today. Do you guys not agree? I agree. And you know what? This, this isn't the, the run over Kyle Dubas show. No. We're just speaking our truth. Like, listen, Kyle's been good to us. He's a good guy. I'm sure he'll land on his feet. But in this situation, I think mistakes were made. We'll, we're going to talk about that. But you're right, though. This could have happened last year when they lost to Tampa. Shanny, go. You know what? You you stake yes. your career on this. These yes. guys, like we're gonna we're gonna move away from this situation. We're gonna try something different. Yeah. They tried at the deadline, 
And you know what? They ended up getting a round out of it, but that's it. But if you look at the body of the work, is the organization better today? Yes, from a regular season standpoint, absolutely. And is the, you know, the, the culture and inclusive and all of the things that, that come with the Maple Leafs, organizations first class. But yes. we're in the, you know, we, the NHL is the winning business. This isn't right. the feel good business and all that. I say this all the time. Yankees, Red Sox, Cowboys, Manchester United, if they had a run like that, I'm sure they would have been changed yes, at some and point. And you can dig through the micro and go through every individual like people on Twitter do saying Nazem Kadri transaction and it goes on and on with Kerfoot and this and that. But no, that's the that's the macro. Anyway, the big picture is it's one right. round. Yeah. Right. And everyone's going to make a mistake. Like the next GM's yeah, exactly. going to make mistakes. Of like course, you can't but at just, the end of the day, it's one round yes. in, a lo- in, in a bunch of years. But here's a couple, a couple things on that. Again, cannot forget, even with all that said, that was not the intention of Shanahan. Shanahan just said he was planning on extending this guy. If yeah. Kyle Dubas last week said, I'm in, I'll take the deal, guess who's the GM today? So Shanahan did not get rid of him because of the job he did. He got rid of him because he either didn't think he was committed or or he asked for too much or, you know, whatever the details Combination were. Combination of, of that. The, yes, yeah. exactly. This was not Dubas leaving because Shanahan didn't think it was good enough. So it's it's a very different context. And that's what puts Shanahan in the forefront here, right? Oh, this guy's been here point. for nine years. This will be his fourth GM. He's won one round. Yes, Dubas is the GM. And prior to that, it was Lou. And it was known as when Shanahan got here. It's time for Brendan Shanahan to take the accountability on that too, right? Because the same thing could have applied. If you're going to say, well, change could happen in Manchester United, doubt, you think Shanahan's yeah. sticking around? No. no. I, he's listen, lucky I, he's here too. So he's getting I, another kick right. at the can. He's getting you, another kick at the can. This be his fourth GM, one but, playoff win, nine you're, years. You're time right. Time for but, him to get something done here. But usually, like I say, there is change. I think he stood by Kyle, gave him his start, gave him his opportunity. And don't you think, let's let's dial this back into a human level. This guy has given Kyle Dubas his start, gave yes. him an opportunity, and then Kyle Dubas this week goes, you know what, it's my right. I, I, it's been hard on my family, all of that. We all thought that Monday's presser was was honest, and we all it was an know, emotional felt presser. It. it was an emotional presser. Yep. But then come Thursday... It's like, well, you know what? Do it, but let, let's add some more money on top here where I'm sure – I don't know the numbers, but I'm sure it wasn't scratch. It was some big numbers. And that's, that's why, Jamie, that's I thought – That's the one that smells for me. That's the one does. that smells and for me. And that's why it kind of smelled like to me where it's like if you've got something floating out there – and I don't know. I don't – like – that's when you play the game. Hey, how about this amount? Because like maybe he's got another know. deal on the table. For Who knows? Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't just make up a number and say, hey, what about that? And you just toss it out there at the last second. Well, Who does that? Yeah, I hear you. And he opened the door for Shanahan to start thinking about the organization under the guise of someone else. Right. Well, that, that's what Shanahan does, expressed an hour ago. It, uh, started but he thinking also, about it differently. But Shanahan also said – you know, we got an opportunity. Like, he, correct me if I'm wrong. He said this could have been done before the playoffs. Like, they, they yeah. talked about it. Like, there were points throughout the season that this could have been done. It wasn't done. So, does that is that Kyle Dubas going, I'm going to wait and, and believe I have as much leverage as possible. Hopefully, we go to the cup. Hopefully, all fine, no problem. But you end up in the second round, and you go out in five now, all of a sudden, you start playing some hands here, and I don't know if finally, Shan, it looked to me like Shanny's like, I don't, if this guy's not all Which, in, and he's, you're out. That's it. It's okay. Enough. We'll then find it better somebody start, else. That, that logic better start applying to the players, because I wouldn't be but shocked right. if Dubas said, well, he rolled over for Willie and Austin and Mitch, so may I, it's my turn now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. And like right. when those guys wanted whatever they wanted, they got whatever they wanted. And, and here, where there's no salary cap, and if this is the guy you really believe is the guy for the job, it better not have been dollars and cents, right? It better be deeper than that. And I'm sure it is. And the details are only going to go so far. Again, I appreciate the candor from Shanahan. I'd like to see it more. I find it a little bit interesting that now the details are coming out to kind of spin the story against Kyle, right? To make now, like details never come out of this organization. Now, we know when an agent called 
<laughs> like we haven't right. heard anything from this team in nine years. And now we know when. Are you just surprised called. you heard details today? Yes, I'm shocked. And again, shockness. I, some I, level I, of shockness. There's a lot. There's very a high. lot of shockness. Shockness meter <laughs> is going nuclear right now. Nuclear. Nuclear. Yes. I'll create a new but, word for that. But but you're right. But but details but, never come out of this team. And now Shanahan's here breaking down what he had for breakfast with Dumas two weeks ago. Well, um, I'd like I, to see that remain consistent, but I'm willing to put money on it that it won't. I give him full credit for that because at least we got a window into how this I, all unfolded. I love it. But, but that being said... Uh, uh, there was two things. There's lots of work to be done here for the next five, six weeks. Still, and, you're right about that. And yeah. I, I, but I like Shanahan. Like, he, he stopped short and said, there's 500 people that work at this organization. We'll be fine for the next little bit. Like, he basically stopped short of saying well, that, but I took that for that. And he referenced a couple of Dubas' guys, right? He, he referenced Pridham, and Pridham's right. name's been out there a lot. It, you know, could Pridham be uh, looking elsewhere or could – people be knocking in his door for for vacancies around the league he specifically mentioned Britham, who has been lockstep with Dubas since day one and he mentioned Wes Clark who goes way back with Kyle like way back they are very close and Wes runs the scouting department and he referenced Wes because he's going to run the draft right so you're right like that Shanahan now has to get to his people which he said he was and let everyone know Rome is not burning here and right. You got a really important six weeks, two months, and it's still it should be a very coveted job. You've got a sure. team that goes to the playoffs every year, high end talent, a huge market, owners that are going to give you a blank check to do whatever you see fit. You're going to make money, and if you win here, you're going to be a king. That's pretty yeah. compelling. But who's it going to be, and how quickly can you get people in? and get the hiring process going because, again, this time last week, it doesn't sound like Shanahan was even thinking about a plan B. Mm-hmm. Man, you've yeah. said that a lot, Hayes. You've said that since – it just seems like a lot – we've heard it a lot. You like, I think Berkey said it back in the day. You win, you get your name on a school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you're the king of the county, it's been a long time. Well, man. we've said it for we've said it we've it's said it since we've been the same on the sales show. pitch, but it's it still, is. It still and it's true, and it's still true. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is. Shanahan, I like the fact that he was very transparent because if he wasn't today, all it does is lead to speculation. To me, it, it like the fact that he laid out a timeline, did everything. Because if he didn't, it would just be, you know, whatever leaks out through insiders and online stuff, as opposed to like this is what happened from our side. Kyle might have a different story, but I, I personally, again, this is dumbing it down. I feel like Kyle may have overplayed his hand here from yep. leverage, and and Brandon and said that's too much. You, to be fair gotta, to Kyle, know. like he'll probably speak at some point, and maybe he, he will does. express himself. Maybe he won't. Right. Who knows? Uh, but that very well could be the case, and and that's kind of how Shanahan detailed it. Like we were going, they were going back and forth. They felt like a deal was going to happen, and then the press conference caught Shanahan off guard. Right. Because Dubas had never brought up any of those issues to him. And then waiting, 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 an email from Kyle saying, okay, I'm willing to come back. Agent comes back over the top with a new deal. And all of a sudden, that changes things. And if you do that, you are risking the party you're working for, possibly just cutting bait. Right. But listen, the guy that Shanahan thought was right for the job is no longer available. So now he's got to change his mind on that in terms of the program, right? Right. In terms of who's going to build the program and who's going to take this team and where they're going to take it. Um, Like this is the nature of sports is when there are firings, they happen after the season and the new season's right around the corner, right? It's every market's the same. You fire a guy right after the season's over and you got to jump on a moving train. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen here. Well, and, and everything that was on the table, like Kyle came back and said, everything's on the table as far as look at what Florida did last year. And, you know, so he kind of alluded that there was going to be some change from, you know, the inner core. And that was asked. Obviously, Shani can't answer that question right now because he doesn't know who his manager is going to be. But that philosophy, I like I think there is going to be change. I don't think it has to be major change, but I do think believe there has to be a shift. And here's the other thing that I would ask both of you. Do you think that there may be, and I, I don't mind this in management groups, you do need differing philosophies. But 
maybe it was a scenario at the trade deadline where Shani was like, you need to be more gritty. You need to do this. And and maybe there was a disconnect with Wouldn't something be with shocking. that, too. Wouldn't be shocking if autonomy factored in. The word autonomy has been thrown out there, correct? Right? For sure. So, so that that is something that if there was a difference in philosophy in the way you build your team or you want the product on the ice, you know, maybe that it was in the back of his mind, too, saying, OK, like I'll head in a different direction after this week's events. Right. Well, exactly. You know? And there, there's very likely more details between the Shanahan Dubas conversations that were not revealed. Oh, and right. they yeah. never will be. And they never will. Nor do they have to be. I, I understand. No one expects you know, a full transparency of everything that's happening behind the scenes. Totally understandable. But what I mean by that is there may have been a disconnect with what has to happen here moving forward, whether it's the coach, the players, if you trade a player, which one that is, what you would expect to come back, what you feel you need to address. And again, the, the timeline is, is, is quite interesting for me because when Shanahan anointed Dubas and pushed Lou aside, it was on the verge of working out three massive contracts that have had a huge ripple effect on everything within this organization. Yeah. Nylander, Matthews, Marner. Guess what we're on the verge of happening again? Willie and, Willie and Austin can sign this summer. Mitch can sign next summer. And I think if you look back on it, Shanahan, I'm sure, has to regret the way those played out. Not, not, that, not that he doesn't love the players. Not that the players haven't pulled their weight in the regular season. The business but the, of it. The business side of it. Sure. And he allowed a rookie GM to take on more than he could chew. And Shanahan was in those rooms too. And he's got to own it as well. But now, does he try to bring in a different voice and a different approach with those contracts moving forward? We'll see.